Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. Welcome back to another Mac Mini M4 and Final Cut Pro 11 video. Now a lot of y'all have asked me and thank y'all for the great questions. Keep them coming and I'll try to respond to all of your questions with a video. But people are asking me, is Mac Mini M4, is it good enough for video editing? Is Mac Mini M4 powerful enough for Final Cut Pro 11 video edits, or might one need to go with a faster Mac, you know, a faster Mac Mini, the Mac Mini M4 Pro, or maybe a Mac MacBook Pro M4 Pro. So I'm going to share my unfiltered opinions within this video. Now for starters, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to check out all my videos. I've posted thousands of videos. I've been running this YouTube channel. I'm a one-man wrecking crew. I've been running this YouTube channel for many years and I've got thousands of videos. And throughout those years, I've lived through the evolution of the Final Cut Pro video editing product and then also the various Macs. So, I mean, I've been using Macs back when they were, uh, you know, in the infancy and, and that actually before I even started messing around with YouTube, I was using that uh, Mac, the first iMac, the big CRT iMac in the colorful colors, right when Mac OS X first released. And not to get overly technical, Mac OS X is Unix, and that's what brought me to the Mac uh, ecosystem. But as far as Mac Mini M4 and its capabilities as being powerful enough to edit videos within Final Cut Pro 11. And by the way, at the time of filming this video, Final Cut Pro 11 has only been out for a few weeks because we had Final Cut Pro 10 previously. But check out my uh, video Final Cut Pro 11 video playlist and I'm going to continue to post a lot of uh, hands-on demonstrations of the speed and the capabilities. But I mean, you're just wanting an answer. That's why you're watching this video. You're probably shopping for the Mac Mini and you're wondering if it's going to be powerful enough to do what you want it to do. And by the way, you can expand this video's description and then click the links there to find the various Mac Mini M4 models, including the Mac Mini M4 Pro, also the, uh, the other Mac models, like the iMac and the uh, MacBook Pro. But you can see behind me, I've got my Mac Mini M4. It's the base model. The only upgrade that I applied to it was the uh, internal storage. I bumped it up to one terabyte. Just so I've got a decent amount of storage built in to the Mac Mini M4, obviously the size of the internal storage is not going to affect the performance, the speed of the Mac Mini M4 but it'll just give me you know, more internal storage and potentially better future-proof my Mac Mini M4 investment. And I went with the base model because from my experience, and I also at the time of filming this, I also run a Mac, MacBook Pro M3 Pro. And to be frank and just brutally honest, if you're someone like me to where every few years you'll probably upgrade your Mac. You don't, you probably don't want to future-proof it. Because if you look at the numbers, and when I say numbers, I'm talking about price. If you go with a fully loaded top spec Mac, you're spending a lot more. And in my opinion, and, and this is just my opinion, I would go with the base model. You know, at least get 16 gigs of RAM. That's what I've got. For me, it's plenty. And if you want to upgrade the internal storage, you can. But even though I upgraded the internal storage, and that's the only upgrade that I applied to my Mac Mini M4, I keep all my mass storage external. So I've got a four terabyte that I assembled myself. Subscribe and check out my separate video where I explain how to create your own inexpensive and fast Mac storage. 
So, I mean, it's inexpensive. I put it together. I connected it to the, uh, to the uh, Thunderbolt port on the Mac, and that was a much less expensive option than going with a top spec built-in storage. Like I said, even though I upgraded the internal storage to one terabyte, all of my large files are stored externally. Is the Mac Mini M4 powerful enough for video editing? Well, let me tell you my workflow. So I film primarily in 4K. I do film some videos in 8K, very, very limited quantity of 8K videos. I don't see the business need right now to fully embrace 8K, therefore I'm sticking with, uh, with 4K. So I'm filming primarily in 4K 60 frames per second with this camera, and I've linked the camera like I use within this video's description too. But the Mac Mini M4 that I have the base spec with 16 gigs of memory, and like I said, I bumped it up to one terabyte storage, plenty powerful. And as I mentioned earlier, check out, subscribe, and check out my Final Cut Pro 11 videos playlist, and you can see my rendering speed in real time, my Final Cut Pro, because I'll send from Final Cut Pro 11 to compressor. You can see my export times in real time, so you can get a virtual feel for how fast the Mac Mini M4 is for Final Cut Pro 11 video editing. So unless you're using some sort of super duper high-end camera and you've got a crazy video format that's just, a, that's just a system resource hog, the Mac Mini M4 base is probably going to be more than powerful enough. But like I said, if you've got a production studio and you've got ultra high-end cameras, well, if you've got all that, you've probably got a budget to where you would probably want to splurge and go with the top, you know, the higher spec uh, Mac computers, whether that's a MacBook Pro or a uh, or a Mac Mini M4 Pro. I mean, that's that's up to you. But my best recommendation, if you can get hands on a Mac Mini M4 with your camera, import some video, edit the video, export the video, and see number one how snappy is the actual editing process is there noticeable lag if so is it enough lag to where it makes it feel cumbersome or is it such a minimal amount of lag that it's more than sufficient and you probably wouldn't want to spend more for the uh for the mac mini uh computer specs so i mean i'm just telling you like it is because a, a lot of people just try to sell you on the top spec but man it's future proof the reality is, even if you go, if, if you had an unlimited budget, and even if you went with the top spec Mac Mini M4 Pro, I mean, nothing is future-proofed, especially as quickly as, uh, as computers are changing now and, uh, you know, the embracing AI, artificial intelligence, and all of those workflows. So I, I would never look at a computer purchase as something that is in any way future proof yeah it may be a little bit faster it you know at that point in time but it's going to hit a point to where the the underlying uh, architecture is going to continue to evolve and even if you went with the top spec at the time of filming this say the m4 pro it's going to become obsolete just like the base model m4 so in my mind the M4 is more than powerful enough for the cameras that I use. And since it's more than powerful enough, and since I just, like I said, I got the base spec, I spent a few hundred dollars extra to get the one terabyte internal upgrade, but it was very affordable. And now in two, three, four, whenever I decide to upgrade the Mac Mini again, I'm upgrading from something that was a uh, much lower cost of entry. And if you look at it from that perspective, let's say hypothetically that you went, instead of going with a more base model Mac Mini M4 like I did, let's say you went with a higher spec uh, Mac Mini M4 Pro and you compared those prices. Well, if you put those prices side by side, you're probably going to find that it may be close to double the price, if not, if not more than double the price. 
So if you look at it from that perspective, assuming that the next generation of Mac Mini is offered in a, uh, in a base model config as well, and around this, or close to the same price point as today, in essence, by not getting the top spec Mac Mini, you're saving those funds for a few years from then when they release whatever the next iteration of Mac Mini is. So that's one way to look at it. But to take dollars and all of that completely out of the picture, if you just look at it from the perspective of, okay, this is the camera I use, these are the videos that I edit, is it a smooth process? Can I edit my videos, export my videos, and upload them to YouTube or wherever you're publishing your videos to in a timely fashion? If it's comfortable to work with, if it's fast enough to get the job done, I mean, why spend more? I mean, unless there's some sort of incentive for you to be able to pump out video content uh, more quickly. I mean, if you're in some sort of industry where you need to where seconds count, or you know, seconds or minutes count, then it may be in your best interest to spend more for a faster Mac so you can export that content more quickly. But I, I don't, I don't know. You know, y'all tell me you're you're curious, you're on the fence, you're trying to decide which Mac Mini M4 to buy. Should you buy the Mac Mini M4 Pro, or should you buy the base model Mac Mini? Or should you buy the base model Mac Mini and upgrade the internal storage just a little bit? I mean, I told you what I did. Mac Mini M4 with internal storage upgrade to one terabyte, and I kept the memory at the base, which if you didn't know, with Mac Mini M4, the base memory is now 16 gigs, which in my opinion is more than sufficient. I mean, unless you're running a lot of, you know, Let's say, what, what would someone do? Let's say they weren't even using super high-end cameras. What might they do within Final Cut Pro 11 that would create the need for more power? Well, if you had multiple cameras that you were filming, so I've got the camera there, I've got a camera over here, camera over there, and you were doing what's called multicam. So you were editing a video within Final Cut Pro 11 that would switch among various cameras. In that situation, You've got a lot more, uh, you've got a lot of concurrent video files within your Final Cut Pro 11 timeline. And in that situation, things may slow down a little bit because you've got all of that content. And in that scenario, you know, maybe, I mean, well, you know, back to what I said earlier, if you've got all that equipment, you've probably got a pretty sizable budget. So, you know, spending a little bit more for the, for the Pro model of the Mac Mini M4 may be in your best interest if you're doing that. But for people like me that have published thousands of YouTube videos and are working to publish thousands more, this doesn't slow me down. I mean, I'm getting my content edited, I'm getting it exported, I'm getting it uploaded to YouTube, and I'm doing it all in a timely fashion. So I hope this video helped. Again, if you're shopping for the Mac Mini M4 or the Mac Mini M4 Pro or any of the other Macs for that matter, expand this video's description, and then click the links there. Questions, comments, comment down below. Ask your questions down below, and I'll try to respond within upcoming videos here on youtube.com forward slash irixguy. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash irixguy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.